Hey, I'm Pastor Patrick Lagan. Welcome to Great Life Today. We're grateful for the influence that you lend to us each week. As you like and share our broadcast with your family and friends, I believe the greatest gift you can give to someone is an understanding of how to experience victory in life through faith. Now listen, faith comes by hearing, so let's get into the Word of God for today. This is my Bible, and I believe the Word of God, and right now, I renew my mind, and I act on what I believe, because I obey the Word of God. God's blessings are overtaking me. New opportunities are meeting me. Supernatural increase and abundance is manifesting in my life. I am an overcomer. I always win, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a shout like we have the victory. Go with me in your Bibles to St. John 10 and 10, St. John 10 and 10. And uh, uh, this is our foundational text that we've been starting with. It says, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, these are the words of Jesus, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Somebody say, live abundantly. This is the lesson title that we're in. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter in the 16th verse. And a couple of weeks before, or maybe a couple of months before the beginning of this year, I'm always in prayer, uh, not in a deep way, but I'm always acknowledging God in all my ways so he can direct my path on what the focus for the upcoming year is going to be. And as the Spirit of God began to tell me that this year was going to be about manifestation and the believer living abundantly, I needed to hear from God uh, more clarity on how to teach the faith message for prosperity and success, because that's my assignment in the body of Christ. It's to teach the message of faith so that people can experience, someone say, whole life success. That's a healthy, wealthy lifestyle full of pleasure present in the life of a believer. But I said, God, I need more clarity on how to expand this teaching just because this is our 11th year, going on our 11th year in ministry, and we've been fully saturated with the believers that we have with this message. Not that I'm tired of teaching, but I need a little bit more clarity so that we can begin to expand and grow. Somebody say, God's all about growth and expansion. And when you talk to God this way, he'll always respond. And he responds back to me. And he said, the major focus of this message this year is so that Matthew 5 and 16 says this way, that men will see your good works and glorify me. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 9 and 16 because then he gives me this second foundational text that has been part of our, our, our start of our year. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. So God I begin to give me a little bit more of an expanded understanding. Since believers are sent to the world, then the world should want to hear what they have to say. And by and large, the world responds, the other kind of advice from but not in marriage. Who takes financial advice from a person who doesn't have a dime? Likewise, we have to realize the world is not spiritual. Hmm. They're not spiritual. So when we take and we give them scripture that's a spiritual book, a saint, a believer, someone who's given their heart to God has now alive to the scriptures, they'll listen to you without results because they believe you in faith is going to change. But the world ain't listening to that. And so God says, for this year, I want my people more empowered to take this message of faith to the people I'm really sending it to. Oh, now I'm about to get in some trouble. This, is, this happens to be the message that God gave me. But see, most churches are growing because other people are leaving other churches to come to them. God says, I'm not trying to evangelize church. I'm trying to evangelize the world. And there's a ton of people out there who don't belong to anyone's church. But they don't listen to us. Because we don't possess the results. Who are these people? They work with us. They're at, the, they're, at the, they're at Wawa when we pump gas. They're at the malls. We don't know them, and they don't look like us. Because, see, sometimes when we come to church, we start looking different. And now we only want to be around church people unless it's work. We'll work for some folks because church people typically ain't got no money. See, I know I'm in trouble, but see, no, we work with a whole bunch of people that don't come to our churches, 
And then they look at our lives and we're talking Jesus, 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 but no results, results, results. But when you get results, when they get in trouble financially and you got results, when they get in trouble maritally and you got results, when they get in tr trouble with their children and you got results, oh, when they get in trouble with depression and you got results because you're no longer depressed. And so this is the reason why God is saying this year is about living abundantly. But then on last week, we began to talk about understanding our authority and the authority to live the abundant life. And I'm not, for the sake of my first class and the for, sake of, uh, for the sake of all the people last week, I'm not going to rehearse the whole message. Uh, and the reason why is it's now on all access. You can get it. Amen. And so, so we're going to move forward with today's message. See, that's how I'm saving all my time. Let's go to Luke 10 and 17, because we started off talking about this confidence we have in the authority that we have as believers that Jesus gave to us. Now, you do need to know this part, that God gave delegated authority to mankind in Genesis 1 and 26. He said, let us make man in our image, our likeness. Let them have dominion. So he gave all mankind in, all mankind in a spirit form, because Adam had not been made yet. So everybody that would ever walk the face of the earth was been given authority. But then Adam dropped the ball. I say Adam because it was him and Eve, but he get the blame because he the man. He, he's first, right? So he drops the ball, and then the devil is running things. Until Jesus comes, born of a woman, born of a virgin, the seed of Mary, placed in the womb by the Holy Ghost, and he was not born with the same sin problem that Adam and his generation had. So he lives a holy life as the son of man. Somebody say that's important because he didn't live in authority and walk in authority as the son of God. He did it as the son of man, which means the power that he exuded, you have as a born again believer. Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Right. And so let's go really quickly in your Bibles to uh, Luke 10 and 17, because he gives Jesus talks. He's he's beginning to convey authority to his disciples. He's in the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power, give unto you power to tread on serpents. That word power is translated authority. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So somebody say Jesus gave us authority. Let me give you the definition of authority for the, for the case of this folk, uh, for the focus of this lesson. It's God's delegated permission to rule and govern the affairs of the kingdom of God in the earth realm by the spoken word of faith, right? So I exercise authority with my faith. Give you a demonstration. Y'all remember if you just got through the book of Genesis to the third chapter, you know what I'm talking about. God brings all the animals to Adam and he says, Adam, whatever you call them, that will be the name thereof. He begins to give Adam the authority with his words to control the character and the, and the things that are happening in the earth. So somebody say, if Adam had authority before the fall and Jesus restored authority when he rose from the grave, then I must have authority. So you have this kingdom authority, but you've got to understand how to use it. Uh, and the way that we use our authority, go to John 10 and 10 again. The way that we utilize our authority is through our confidence and belief in the delegated authority that's been given to us. 11 years ago, I was led by the Spirit of God to move across the country from Washington State to Central Florida to found Great Faith Church. God told me that as a result of my obedience, lives would be changed and made better from the teaching of faith. And over the years, Angela and I have watched partners connected to this ministry experience victory in marriage and family and career and finances just from implementing the simple faith tools that are taught here at Great Faith Church. Now, monthly, we produce a segment called Making Lives Better where families who have been impacted by this church testify about the power of faith that has changed their lives. Watch this. We were at a point in our marriage where it was just, it, I was exhausted. I was to the point where I just didn't feel like fighting anymore. 
anniversary was coming up and he really pressed it on my heart that we need to take a trip alone without the kids. It doesn't matter the cost, it doesn't matter about the days off, we needed to make it a priority to go away alone. It's about a week away from the cruise. I book it Friday morning and of course I didn't buy the protection plan because I'm thinking, what could happen in a week? Literally that night, Timothy gets a phone call that his father is in the hospital and he's in pretty bad shape. I'm shocked. You know, I literally just booked this cruise and now we're, we have the added expense, unexpected expense of having to fly up and the added emotional burden, you know, of dealing with something so serious. So he flies up, he ends up coming back on Sunday and the following morning, Monday morning, finds out his father passes away. The timing couldn't, from my perspective at the time, couldn't have been worse. Timothy ends up going up for the funeral and he comes back, I, I wanna say Sunday night. Uh, mind you, the cruise leaves Monday. So it was just insanity trying to get ready. Monday came and, you know, I don't know how, but we end up getting to the port in just enough time to miss the boat. I mean, it was still there, I'm still looking at it, but they said, you know, there's no way, they've already pulled the walkway up, there's no way we can get on the boat, there's nobody there except for security. Everybody's on, and they're like, you should have been here an hour ago, and I'm, my mind is blown. I didn't even think we were about to miss the boat. I didn't feel rushed or pressured. I was like, oh, you know, at 3.30, we'll get there. No idea that we were about to miss this boat. So I'm like, God, we did what you said. I made the, we made the sacrifice. We took the time off. We, even with the death, we're here. We're doing everything you said. I cannot believe that this is happening. At the time I'd been really meditating on like, you know, your words matter because sometimes I don't take you find yourself not taking seriously what you say. You just feel like you, I need to vent. But I was to the point where I was like, no, this is serious. I cannot vent anymore. I can't play around anymore. My, my words matter. So at this point I'm like, it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. I refuse to accept, refuse to believe that, that, that this is happening. We were making phone calls to Royal Caribbean and they're basically like, there's not much we can do. You didn't buy the protection plan. I go back to the car and I pretty much collapse because I'm like mentally exhausted, trying to stay in faith, but feeling so opposite. My mother-in-law, she drove us there and she's just, you know, talking to people in Chicago and you know, just letting granny know, different people, different ones who know that we were going on the trip, what happened. And while we're driving home, you know, um, she gets a phone call from a family member who is just like, you know, I want you guys to still at least be able to do something. I want to sew $500 into you so that you can do something for your anniversary. And then, you know, one of the girls in the group chat, she's like, I want to sew $150 into, into a trip for you. So already we're like, $750. I'm like, that's something. We could do something. And then another another one is like, okay, I've got, you know, points, hotel points that you can use. Another one's like, I got AAA discounts, whatever. Everyone's just throwing something in the bag to make sure that we have the time off. At least we can do something. Stan Thomas reaches out to me and she's like, you know what? Just give them a call. At least just try Royal again. Let them know what happened with the, you know, the sudden death, the sudden passing in the family, and just see if they'll at least give you your money back or a credit or whatever. So, you know, we make the phone call. We call Royal Caribbean, and although we just gotten several no's, I called, Timothy called, we got no's. We get on the phone with someone who's like, if you can provide an obituary, then we will give you back. Everything that you paid as far as towards a, as a cruise credit towards a future cruise and we will refund you your taxes and your fees like cash. So we've already got nearly a thousand dollars that we can use towards a trip right now and we still have our cruise credits that we can use towards a future trip. So it's basically two vacations in one, which gave me so much hope because I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to be married next year. So now I'm like, okay, this marriage thing could work. Like, you know, God wants us to succeed. That was the catalyst and a turning point in our marriage. And from then to now, I, it's like immensely different. But even as we go on and we face challenges, I'm so encouraged by what God did in that moment and how faithful he was and how he just provided that it's, it gives me hope. Wasn't that amazing? God is no respecter of persons. He's given to every man the measure of faith and what he's done in principle for one, he will do for another. I'm in agreement with you that as you release your faith for the challenge that you are currently facing, using the principles that you learn from this ministry, that your life also will be made better. 
In Acts 16, a story is told of a vision that the Apostle Paul had of a man in Macedonia saying, come and help us. The scripture records that after Paul saw the vision, immediately those that were with him endeavored to go just like God had spoken to them in vision form. Well, just like the Apostle Paul, God told me to come to Central Florida. And since that time, I've trusted the Spirit of God to witness to people just like you that he's called to partner with me to take this message of faith, not only to Central Florida, but to the entire world. I look forward to our mutual faith transforming lives in the coming days. And for your Great Life Partner gift today of $10 or more, I'd love to send you out two amazing lessons on how to go from good to great in your life along with this amazing Tumblr. I believe that membership has its privilege and I'm privileged to be a partner with you in faith. In Genesis 15 and 1, the, the, uh, Abraham has a situation where God had given him a promise, but he couldn't see the promise that God had gave him. He said to God, he said, the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Seeing, I go childless. Even though God told him he was going to give, a, give him a son, he saw something different. And the, his criteria was he hadn't had a child yet. Instead of just believing God told me I was going to have a child, I'm going to have a child. And then again, in, in, uh, in Joshua 6 and 1, in Joshua 6 and 1, God takes Joshua. He says, as I'm with Moses, I'm going to be with you. And he starts giving him victory after victory. But Joshua gets to Jericho, and it's straightly shut up. And Joshua sees there's no way over. There's no way under. There's no way through. But God says to Joshua, see, I've given you Jericho. And in that case, Joshua decides, I'm just going to go with God's plan. I'm just going to walk around. I'm going to shout, and God's going to give us the city. God specializes in giving us plans that diminish as well as ignore sense realm things with plans of action that don't seem like they're going to work. Okay, what you talking about? When God gave me the job at Washington Mutual, he told me just go, he says, bottom line, he told me he's going to bless me. All of a sudden, somebody calls. That's not the first time that happened to me. The first time that uh, promotion and increase began to happen to me, I was working as a, uh, oh my gosh, I was working for, uh, for an apartment community, at, and I was cleaning garbage. I was the janitor, and I was pressure washing stuff. And God says, I'm going to begin to elevate you. And I said, well, praise the Lord. I get a call into the office saying, hey, you know what? There's more potential than what you're doing. Um, can you become a leasing agent at one of our properties? Okay. How much of a raise? It's about, yeah. Definitely about half more than what you're making. Oh, ooh, I take it. So I go there and I'm a leasing agent. And God says, I'm about to, I'm about to increase you again. So I'm, I'm at the job and I get a call on a Sunday. And the person on the phone says, hey, I know, listen, I'm, <laughs> I really need for you to do this for me. I said, what you talking about? I know that you're thinking about leaving our company. I was like, how you know? Because I sure enough was, y'all. I was trying to figure out how I could find another job because Pastor Angela was pregnant and it didn't look like things were going to work, you know, because she, you know, when, when she got pregnant, she was going to take all three months off, non-paid. And, and my job wasn't going to do it. So secretly, I'm like, I got to find a job, right? So he calls, he says, so you know, oh, yeah, okay, what you want me to do? Well, I have this $32 million property that needs to be managed in Seattle. I have never managed a property. But I believe you can do it. I said, so what's the catch? There's no catch. Just say yes. Yes! <laughs> Hung up the phone, and I get another call, and it's from MetLife. MetLife was calling me to offer me a position as an insurance executive in their firm. And this was a, this, oh my gosh, it was salaried, it was commissioned, it was three weeks of paid training, somewhere different in the country, a couple of three weeks, uh, all that type of stuff. Every, they were going to do everything for me. And I said, how did you know? To call me. Oh, we heard from your friend. He said he'd be a good fit. Y'all say, what kind of friend is that? That's a good friend. Amen. So, so I've seen things happen, but see, when God promotes me, most of the time the catalyst is I just believe what he said. I don't hear what God said and then go try to make it happen. I believe what God said and I say it's going to happen. My wife will tell you on all of those occasions, I used to walk around at home saying, God's about to do something great in my life. Something about to happen, baby. I don't know what it is. I don't know what. Because, you know, because check this out. When I was in job situations like that, there was no such thing as monster or career builder. You had to go to places and apply. 
So how do you go to places when you work nine to five and places that you want to apply at are open? So I'm stuck because, I mean, I'm, I work the hours that I need to apply. And I can't talk to, but God is so rich in his favor towards us that he would say, listen, just believe me, and I'm going to send it your way. Uh, This is my word for people. This is why you got to stop getting so distracted on the job that you're currently working at to try to go find God's best for you. Because when you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, all things I added to you. I would never leave without giving you an invitation to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The Bible declares that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so if you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you haven't given him your life to lead and to guide you into your destiny, now is the opportunity. Will you say this prayer with me? Say, Father, without Jesus, I know I'm lost. But you said in your word, if I ask you to save me and to come into my life, that you would. Right now, I turn my back on my old way of living, my old way of thinking, my old way of doing things, to accept your salvation and accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Holy Spirit, come into my life right now and show me the mysteries of my future, and I know that my life will never be the same. I believe, Jesus, that you came and you died for me, and your blood washes away all of my sins. And as a result of this prayer, I believe that I'm being accepted in the family of God. So I declare with my own confession, my own mouth, I am saved. Listen, welcome to the family of God. I declare your life will never be the same. If you're ever in the Orlando metro area, I would love to have you enjoy one of our Sunday morning God Encounter experiences. Pick one of the scheduled events for your convenience, either 9 a.m. or 11.15 a.m. And we're located at 1458 West 1st Street in lovely Sanford, Florida. Let us know you're coming by visiting greatfaith.church forward slash visit. I know you're going to have an amazing time. This is Pastor Patrick Lagan, and until next time, remember, live abundantly.